Well, what a great service. I want to thank Faye and, and Pastor for leading us wonderfully into this morning's message. I couldn't have picked, actually, a better song to lead into this message because I know a God who holds a future. He has us in his hands. All fear can go when we give all our concerns and circumstances to Jesus Christ this morning. Are you listening this morning? Because there will be a word for you, I can guarantee this. Because when the Spirit of God comes upon me, it, it, and, and I'm able to deliver it well to you this morning, I want you to just take, soak it in. There'll be something, one point in this message for you this morning. You know, last year as a family was probably the most difficult year, 2019, and back end of 2018, that the Jones family had ever in our existence. I've got two sons, and during the latter part of 2018, one of my sons had a very serious diagnosis that actually floored us for a time being. Now, that's not my testimony. My testimony is about me. You've got the same testimony. You've got a testimony in your life where you too have experienced God's presence. My testimony started in May 2019, and it took two months for it to be diagnosed. And the big diagnosis for me that I was not expecting, completely unfounded, no one in my family has suffered with a cancer scare. But that diagnosis came to me when I turned up to a hospital in Manchester by myself because I just thought it was a routine checkup and a routine scan. That scan revealed something that changed our family. It changed the circumstances of where we were. And that circumstance was a cancer diagnosis. And to me, it wasn't just a cancer diagnosis. There, a fear came upon me beyond belief. I thought that these things happened to somebody else, you see. I think messages like that happen to the neighbour or to somebody that I work with. But bad news, you see, friends, can come right to you no matter where you are. I know some of you in the campuses have suffered with a, a diagnosis like that. And the fear and trepidation that it can bring upon your life. That evening when I went back home and told my wife Carolyn about this diagnosis, I've got to be honest with you, I was wondering where God was. Not only was one of my sons suffering with a, 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 a very serious illness, but now I was told shortly after that I was too. So from a very buoyant family, I, I just felt as if, God, where are you? And I remember shedding tears, just me and my wife, not telling the boys for a while, and going to bed that evening. That could only be described as, how long have I got left? How long have I got left? And I remember going to bed that night and sleeping for a, a very short time, on and off, on and off. And I said to God, well, as I woke up around 2 a.m. in that morning, Father, speak to me. Now, I don't want this to come along as if it's a weird appearance. Some of you have heard God's voice audibly. I heard God's voice audibly. It was right in my spirit. And I didn't say, God, if you're there, because I know that God was there. I said, God, speak to me. Give me comfort. Give me joy and give me something that every sufferer needs, and that is hope. And that evening, that night, in the middle of the dark, he spoke to me and he said these words, Chris, I have not finished with you yet. I have not finished with you yet. And that's my message. If there was a title this morning, you could see, God has not finished with you. He has a purpose for your life. He has a plan for your life. There's a feeling of hope came upon me that evening, that night, that God would bring me through this situation and these circumstances. 
There's something when you hear from God, when you connect with him in prayer and through the word of God that arises, it builds up in your spirit when you, when you listen to God Almighty, when you put your hand in his hand, when you say, God, I know you hold the future. So this morning, I want to reset your spirit. Being in lockdown as a multitude of thoughts, a multitude of feelings and emotions. Please this morning, can you just put them just to one side as Carolyn said. I want to just re-inject a spirit of hope, a spirit of joy, which by the way, that's what Christmas is about. It is about hope and it is joy. I want to lift your spirit up where there perhaps is despair in your family or in your workplace a feeling of joy, that actually, if God is in you, your life is forever in his hands. He will, he will look after you. But there's something incumbent upon you and your spirit to connect with God. And my uh, key message this morning is from Isaiah, the scripture. Actually, I'm going to read to you from Isaiah, chapter 35, more left bang in the middle of the uh, Bible. The first 34 chapters of Isaiah is about God bringing um, justice and punishment upon the Israelites. And then there's a change. There is a complete change of focus that starts around Isaiah 35. And verse 8 to 10 is what I'm going to be reading. Isaiah 35 and 8. And a highway will be there. It will be called the way of holiness. The unclean will not journey on it. It will be for those who walk in that way. Wicked fills will not go about on it. No lion will be there, nor will any ferocious beast get up on it. They will not be found there, but only the redeemed will walk there, and the ransomed of the Lord will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. You see, God can provide a way for you. No matter what your circumstances are, whether you're sick, whether you're financially broke, whether you've got mental problems, God can find a way for you. He is a listening God. He is a God that loves you and cares for you. God will protect you, as it says. This morning, in your darkness, in your sorrow, in your seeking for breakthrough in your life, get these words over you. I will return. God will make a way for you. In fact, it says in verse 10 of what I've just read, there will be singing and everlasting joy as he brings you from where you are. You will return with greatness. And not only that, sorrow and darkness will dissipate. It will be removed. Returning to God and following Christ, you see, brings peace. I can't think of going through what we've been through as a family if I'd have Jesus Christ walking alongside us. I want to encourage you this morning. If you're away from God, no matter how you're feeling, whatever circumstances prevail in your life, get close to God. Now, what does that mean, get close to God? What it means is start to read the Word of God. What I've done over the lockdown, and call me a poor pastor, but have you ever read the Bible from beginning to end? Every single chapter. Have you soaked the Word of God in? I'm going to encourage you just to read the Word of God. It might not be from beginning to end, but there'll be something in the Word of God for you and your circumstances. Get close to God. The other one is praying to God, having that relationship and praying for God. I've got three points this morning, and I'm going to say this to you. I've just heard this week about um, Hancock and Ricky, whatever his name is, (laughs) to to, uh, talk about leveling up after lockdown. And what that was meaning, it was leveling up the finances from the south and to the north. But I'm saying this, we need to level up after lockdown lockdown. And the three things I want to speak to you is this. Number one, there are words of affirmation for your spirit. We have to speak to us. 
We have to speak ourselves to our spirit. I'm a great believer in the pastor's preaching and you can get something from him. But there's something that's going to change your life. And that's what you say over yourself. Something you can say over your own spirit. Who are we in Christ? Let's get back to the fundamentals. If we believe God is God, his mercy endures forever, he's a healing God, then it, the first thing is, is that you are chosen. You're not a random selection like pulling a ball out of a lottery bag or, 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 or deciding who, who, who stays and who goes. No. I am chosen. Say that over yourself this morning. I am chosen chosen. I am a child of God. I'm not a lucky, random selection. Deuteronomy 7 and verse 6 to, 10, uh, 6 to 10 says this, the Lord did not set his affection on you and choose you, numerous than other peoples, because you are small in number. No, but it was because the Lord loved you. That's why he chose you. And he kept the oath he swore in your ancestry. And he brought you out with a mighty hand and he redeemed you from the land of slavery, from the power of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Here's a word for you this morning. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is God. He is a faithful God. He is truthful God. Keep his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. You see, I had the feeling when I accepted Christ, just as Pastor Georgina um, accepted Christ when she was nine, I accepted Jesus Christ when I was seven. I can remember the day, I can remember the time, and I can remember the place. At seven years of age to this day. I'm a few years older than Pastor Georgina. But I remember it. My memory is good. I remember that I was chosen, special in God. You're special. When the teacher used to select me for a football team, I don't know, in the 1970s, there used to be a selection process going on where every, all, all the lads used to start, um, stand in a line and there was two captains, two captains appointed. And uh, I, I don't think this would happen now in school, I wouldn't have thought. But the captains used to, I, I'll have him. And the guy used to come out, I'll, so, I'll, I'll have that person. I'll have this person, I'll have that person. Leaving the weakest and the poor footballers to the very end. God's selection is not like that, friends. He chooses you because he loves you. Your name was already written in the Lamb's Book of Life, the Bible says. So you are chosen. Say that this morning. I am chosen. I look back and see that God chose me for the time, for the place and for that conversation. God chooses you to help others. He chooses you because you've got something in your spirit that can help others. There'll be a moment this afternoon that you can share the good news. Whether you're going for a hospital appointment, whether you're at school teaching, there'll be something in your spirit that you can tell others about God. You are chosen for this time and for this place. Remember this, that God has chosen you because he loves you. No other reason. No other reason, but God loves you. He has redeemed you and delivered you from sin. Know this, that the Lord your God is God. It really gets at my spirit, friends, when I hear in campuses and friends that I've, I've mixed with, when they say, oh, it's all about the big fella upstairs. It's all about the big chap upstairs. The big guy. No, no, no. Let's have some respect for God. God is God. He is the redeemer of our souls. He is not the chap upstairs. He is not the big fella. He is God. He can intercede for your sin. He's already done it. He's already saved us and washed us and set us free. Know that the Lord your God is God. He's also faithful and he's just to bring you to a place where your promises will exist until they are revealed in your life. John 15 and verse 16 says this, You did not choose me, but I chose you. Can you imagine that? I didn't choose God. Oh no, I might have accepted him. He chose me. God chose me, who I am, because he loved me. 
don't think this, that you're smart enough because you selected or chose God. No, no, no. God chose you. That in July 1970, that's when I accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior, long time ago. I appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit that will last. So that ever you ask in my name, the Father will you. Point two, I have a purpose. You have a purpose. Write that down. You've got a purpose. You've not got a case sarah sarah mentality. Whatever will be, will be. It's not just a mere existence. Romans 8.28 says this. And we know that all things God works for the, go- for, for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Can I say this? It's his purpose. It's not your purpose. God's calling is about his purpose being revealed through your life. What's my purpose in God? Forget it. It's what God's purpose is through your life. That's what we should be saying. Some of you are just existing and not persisting in God's promises over your life and understanding his purpose. God works for those who love him and are called to his purpose. You see, your calling, your purpose, is much more than your job, your vocation. It's much more than a dream or a promise. It's much more that something is said over you. Your calling is how God created you when he did this. He called you. This is the purpose for you to worship him. That's your purpose. For you to serve him. That's your purpose. For you to give glory to him and serve him. That is your purpose purpose i'm saying this morning that some of you have lost your way and i'm 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 encouraging this morning to get hold of god's purpose remind yourself that god is god his plans for your life has already been god won't stop it becoming real in your life there's only one person that'll do that and that's you and that's you come on guys this morning i have a purpose what is my purpose in my family Your plans aren't necessarily God's plans. And I'm encouraging you this morning. If things don't work out, then don't have a bottom lip. Oh, I keep, oh, God doesn't speak to me. God doesn't deliver promises to me. No, remember this. God has still got a purpose for you. He will deliver those things for you in your life. I'm encouraging you to be mature in the faith, it's the Bible says. Build up your spirit this morning. Mature in your faith. Reignite the passion. The passion that we should have as Christians in our behavior, in our language, in the way we walk and talk. Speak positive things over yourself and your family. And let God, this Christmas time as we embark, I think it's Advent Sunday this week, the first, then, then, then come on guys, remind yourself you have a purpose. My final point is this. I have a future. Say this. I have a future. I've got a future. I've, I, I've, I've not got a no-hoper. That, oh, well, you don't know. And, and as a pastor, I've heard many, many words regularly. And a one-on-one, I've had these private chats with people. Well, you don't know what I've done. God's left me years ago. He's jumped out of my family years ago. God's lost on me. You don't know what I've done. You don't know about my past. I failed miserably. That might be true. You might have failed. You might be feeling miserable about this. But God has not lost his promises over your life. All this feeling of great joy. Philippians 1 verse 6 says this. Being confident of this. Be confident about your future in Christ. That he who began a good work in you will carry it out to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. God has not finished with you yet. And what does that mean? Some of you I know have experienced difficulty in relationships. Perhaps you've been through a divorce or you're going through a separation this morning. There's over 400 people watching this morning. There'll be something in your family that you're not happy with. Well, I'll tell you what, God can sort this. 
Keep close to God this morning. Say, I have a future. You've got a future. I want God's promises to be real over my life. COVID won't determine your future. Jesus Christ determines your future. He is the one in charge if you walk in his ways. I want you this morning, as Isaiah said in that 35 verse 10, that an everlasting joy will come over you. So when you are facing difficulties and circumstances, that joy is so prevalent in your being, it will, t- it will walk you through this morning. Give God praise. Give God praise. You see, your life experiences, when, when, when you're struggling and going through problems and situations, rather than looking inwardly, at your life, oh, it's not working out for me. Just try and do this. This is the difficult bit. Turning your pain into praise. When when we were going through it as a family, we decided, I tell you what, we're in pain, but we're going to praise the King of Kings. We are going to praise the Lord of Lords. I encourage you this morning to praise through your pain. Your life experience can help someone else going through exactly the same situation and encourage others. That's your future. You know, if you once had a, 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 well, I used to preach years ago and I used to get on stage singing and praising and all this stuff, but I've lost it because I've been through a divorce or I've got a relationship problem or my past is littered with all this. Get your life right with God. Come back to God this morning. Remind yourself that you are chosen. You do have a purpose, and you do have a future. Don't let anyone else say that. Don't let anyone else say that you've not got a future. King's Church is open for that. God's open for that too. We want to encourage you this morning as I land this message that you can return to greatness. You can return to what God is calling you to be and who you are in Christ. Remember these three things. You are chosen. It's not a chance selection. You have a purpose, not a whatever will be, will be, okay, Sarah, Sarah. No, you have a a purpose and a calling upon your life. And you've got hope and you've got joy. Come on, guys, let's lift our spirits. Remind ourselves who you are, who I am in Christ this morning. I hope that's benefited you this morning. I hope there's one thing you can get hold of this morning. Be strong in the Lord. I'm going to pass over now. So Pastor Georgina and Pastor Derek this morning. Thank you.